Welcome to the show that your parents, the PTA, and the asleep don't want you to hear. The Headiest Blog. Today, Andrew Tate's true personality exposed in this fresh and fit interview. Here we go. The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong and independent, I don't need no man, like, y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. He's managed to get right there to the top from the beginning because he was already famous. So right. I, the video I made to him was saying, look, you keep insulting the game, but you've jumped in at a certain level because you're lucky. But if you want to fight somebody, he wouldn't He wouldn't fight me because I'm not famous enough for him to lose to. Right. Because I'd smoke him. But I was like, you're going to come out here and talk like a fighter. There's a whole bunch of fighters out there who no one's ever heard of, who have no money, who would whoop your ass. You're not the best. You can go to Dagestan and find some kid who has no cash who would smoke you. And everybody knows it, right? So that was the video was about. And I said, look, if you want to fight a real fighter, you can fight me because I'm genuinely upset at you. On the other hand, part of me likes Jake Paul. Right. Part of me respects his hustle. And I want to make another point here. I put on Twitter publicly that he was going to smoke Ben Askren in less than a minute, mm -hmm. about an hour before the fight. And everyone was calling me crazy. Askren's a fighter who did all this shit. I want you guys to understand something about Jake Paul. He is not just a YouTuber. He is a young man training with Canelo and Ryan Garcia. Mm -hmm. and with a lot of money and all the time in the world yeah. to train with the best yeah. camp in the world he can box the idea he he's smart he doesn't say that i'm just a youtuber but what he really is is a student of the game who's three or four years into training with one of the best camps in the world who has all the money for the best re rehabilitation the best diet all that blah blah Facts. blah. so he can box i'm not saying the guy can't fight <clears throat> but I'd still whoop his ass <laughs> but, but i would whoop his ass but he if, he wouldn't take a fight against me because when he loses He's, I'm not nearly on his level of fame, right? So, like, he lost to who? Whereas if he loses to Conor McGregor, it's no big deal. Well, he lost to Conor McGregor. Who cares, right? That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. It's but still I for him. Yeah, it's money for him. But I'm not saying the guy can't. I'm not going to say the guy can't box or he's just a YouTuber. That That's marketing spin. Yeah. The guy can box. No, yeah. And let me say this as well about Jake Paul. Jake Paul is very smart because think about this, right? He has a massive, a massive audience, right, that follows whatever he does. So one thing, he might be rapping. That makes money because it's just, you know, a lot of listens, a lot of streams. But then boxing is a one-time fight. 10, 15 minutes, yep. 50 million, 20 million, because one fight. But it takes a lot of bravery to do, it right? Does. It takes a lot of bravery. This is what I mean. I can't say the guy. I know because I fought professionally. It's scary. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's scary. Every every man would like to say they're a pro fighter. So why is not every man a pro fighter? Because it's scary. Yep. It's mm -hmm. scary. So he has balls, but they are hand choosing opponents, and he is with the best team and the best camp, and that gives you a lot of confidence when you have people around you who really understand the fight game because the fight game is show business. They do not want Jake Paul to lose. Mm -hmm. They want him to more. Everyone makes more money if he wins. Of course. So when they chose Ben Askren, they analyzed Ben Askren's striking extremely effectively, and they worked out that he can't punch, and he's an idiot. He's always <laughs> been a wrestler. That's why. I knew <laughs> and then they sat down for a ten-week training camp with the best boxers in the world and said, "Here's how you're going to smoke him." It's mm. all planned. Like it's they they do their best. So, yeah. But I I don't hate the guy. I'd love to fight him, but uh, he'd be an idiot if he fought me because <laughs> I could fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ben Askren can wrestle. I don't consider wrestling fight. I don't want, that's one of the reasons I, I never really, I, I stick with kickboxing because I signed a contract that paid more money at the time and it paid the bills. Mm -hmm. But the whole wrestling jujitsu shit, I mean, I know a lot of people do Let's it. Let's talk about that real quick, Andrew. If, yeah. if someone wants to get into combat sports or yeah. they get into some kind of combat to protect themselves in the real world, real world yeah. type defense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Full contact karate is good. Um, kickboxing, boxing. Even Taekwondo at a good gym, not at a McDojo, would be good too. What should they learn? Okay, so the whole BJJ thing. Every, everyone loves BJJ and never shuts up about BJJ. Ooh, <laughs> oh, I forgot Muay Thai. Although Muay Thai is risky. Not so good for street defense. It's an offensive style where if you mess up, you can break your leg. BJJ, BJJ, BJJ. Let me tell you something. BJJ is absolutely useless outside of the, the cage or your dojo. It's useless on the street. What is BJJ for people like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian okay, cool. Jiu-Jitsu. It's useless. You can't do a double leg takedown on concrete. You're going to fuck yourself <laughs> up. It's Even true. Even if you do take him down it's to true. the ground, many submissions don't work if he can bite or if he can scratch your eyes or if he can pull a knife. Facts. Literally. Thirdly, you don't know if he has friends. Yup. Take him to the ground, put him in an arm bar, and his friend's going to fucking football foot, put, kick you in the head. Yup. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. True. Right? The number one rule of street fighting Never is go to the ground. Feet. Yes. Yeah. Number one yes. rule. You might need to run. You probably should run. Especially you hit a dude and he goes, run. 
You don't know, he might get up and, and draw. What, yeah. what are you standing around for, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're rolling around on the floor with some dude. It's very stupid. It's amateur hour. And all these Brazilian jiu and I, I'm in, and, and here's what's more. If you train in doing it, you're more likely to feel comfortable doing it. And if you feel comfortable doing it, you're more likely to do it under duress, which means you're more likely to get yourself killed. So it's actually not good to practice it. It's good to practice stand up should you need it, right? Because you know how to do it in case you need to know how to do it. I agree entirely. Just you guys, every time I say this, like, no, BJJ, blah, 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 blah. you're a bunch of dorks. It's useless. <laughs> you could take the best BJJ guy in the world, put him against two normal men to have a street fight, and he'd struggle. Yeah. You can't use what he against knows. Against two, so you're yes. You're hitting him, yeah. right? True. That's the first thing. Second thing I get here a lot of is Krav Maga. Krav Maga oh, is no, the biggest no, no, crop no, no, no. of, they watch, you watch too many movies. No, 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 it's crap. It's, it's, it's made for people that don't fight to learn the basics as fast as you can. It's made, it's not made to, you know, be a professional fighting art. But the one that's surprisingly good, if you go to a good gym, Full contact karate, so that would be what Ky Kyokushin karate, but you could do whatever, like as long as your teacher's a good one, right? Like Shotokan, which is the traditional one. Anyway, you could do whatever, or even Taekwondo. Like they say, Taekwondo is useless in a street fight. No, it's not. It it is if you if you're doing like the Olympic Taekwondo where they fight with their hands down and they're idiots. But that's not that it goes totally against like the the principles of fighting but if your teacher's not an idiot then they'll teach you good they won't teach you just leave your hands down and flick your legs you know like it's obviously that's stupid you think oh if someone comes at me with an ak what i'll do is and i'll grab it i'll flip it like, no you won't if someone comes at you with an ak you're gonna is. run the hell away you're, you're gonna throw your wallet yeah example the stabbing capital of the world when's the last time you've seen a single video of anyone get like, knife disarmed and there's no such thing as a knife disarm. Not, not, someone's going to sneak up on you with a blade, you're going to get stabbed. Yeah, and you're gonna die, true. Right? And you're going to die quick. Because yeah. knives, are, knives are a lot more ruthless than people understand. Yep. You're not going to... This whole Krav Maga fantasy movie crap is garbage. If you want to learn to fight in the street, you learn to... Not, I'm a kickboxer. And it's not kickboxing either. Because of the few street altercations I had, I didn't kick. Because I'm either in jeans, or I'm on wet grass, or there's people around. Kicks are a risk with balance, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. It's true. You, you just smack a guy in the mouth. That's what you do. So if you want to learn to fight, you box. Yep. Mm -hmm. if, you can, if you can throw a good one-two, bum-bum, if you can box a, a, enough, that's all you should need in your life. And right. after you hit him, get out of there before he either gets up or someone else in the crowd you don't see sucker punches you or the cops roll up. Just smack him and leave. Don't be afraid to run. There's been times in my life where guys are bang, he's out, I'm fucking, I'm out of there before yep. I even know what's going to happen. Like, you can forget the tough guy crap, right? Right. So you want to defend yourself in the street box. That's all you need to do. Stay Anything alive. else is garbage. And stay alive. Yeah, stay alive. Rule one of life. Do not die. <laughs> yep. That's rule one. Indeed. Uh, no, but uh, I, I think that's good advice. And uh, when I said, f why I said that, f like, f karate is good for that as well is because it also teaches you to punch. It also teaches you one, two. If you Unlike, know, if you're doing, do not die. If There's you're in a good class, crap. I do drug the guy, I do BJJ. Da -da. And another thing, man, the the hospital and the jails are full of ego. Yes, the hospitals, the morgue, indeed, jails, it's all full of ego. It's all ego to put all these people there, right? It's all ego. So <laughs> you need to really, really strongly consider if you want to fight. I, I I try my very best. I'm a peaceful man. I don't like to fight on the street. I've had to do it a few times, and when I say had to, I mean had to. If someone's gonna really run their mouth to me and they're far away. I'm just gonna be like, okay, you're right, bro. You're right. You're right. Sorry. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be like, look. Cool, De-escalate cool. the situation like a smart me, person. It's on, it's on, it's on, right? This is coming from yeah. a kickboxing champion. And I'm, by a, world, way, guys. And I'm a world yeah. champion. <laughs> and I'm a world champion, right? But you don't know who you're messing with. De-escalate the situation. Know what he has on him. Yep. You don't know if he's ready to die right then, right there. Yep. Right. Yep. You don't yep. Know if he's ready to do life right then, right there. Yep. Right? You don't know who he has else with him in that club restaurant. You don't know who's gonna be waiting for you outside. You don't know. You don't know. Is it really worth it to prove a point about how big a tough guy you are? Nope. I know I'm a tough No. Guy. It's very stupid. In fact, it's really funny. People who know how good they are don't need to, e to, to vomit their ego all over the place. It's like, okay, okay there, buddy. You know, and just de-escalate the situation. You don't need, like, anyway. Tough guy. So I'm very happy to say the guy, sorry. I'm really sorry you're offended. Okay, sorry. No, no problem, no problem. Sorry. 
Because I know I'm, I, I've got the cage. I don't have to. I'm not insecure. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. Yep, right? yep, yep. The guy goes, oh, you can't talk to me that way. <laughs> it's just stupid. It's amateur hour shit, man. Stay alive. Stay alive. It's crazy out here. Stay alive. Stay alive. It's true. So, yeah. so Andrew, you're a multimillionaire. Yeah. You also have crypto. Yep. You also invest in like, you know, different uh, investments. Yeah. So for someone that's a young person coming up, yep. what is the best piece of advice you can give to them to make it to be successful? Right. So if someone were to say to me from absolute ground zero, how to get rich? Mm -hmm. All right. That's a good question. So I would say do two things. The first thing I would say you should do is develop a phone addiction. And you should develop a phone addiction, but you should refuse to consume content mm. and only create content. Genius. So it doesn't, I have, I will say right here, right now, I have a genuine phone addiction. Me too. I, I, nine, 10 hours a day screen time. Me too. I live on my phone. I'm on my phone. Oh, that's where the money is, that's where the pussy is. Facts. So where else am I gonna be, <laughs> right? I'm on my phone. I'm on my, I'm, I'm, you see me, I'm always just on my phone, right? Uh, I have a phone addiction. But I'm not consuming a bunch of crap, right? I'm producing. I'm producing on my Twitter account. I'm constantly tweeting. Doesn't matter if it's just tweets. Doesn't matter if it's TikToks. Doesn't matter if it's YouTube videos. Produce, 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 produce. Yep. If you spend all those waking hours producing, eventually people will pay attention to you. Yes. And we live in an attention economy. Yep. This is the economy we now live in. It's no longer about competence like it used to be. It's not even so much. It's, it's about attention and it's about network. It's those two things. It's who you know and it's how many people pay attention to you. So if you develop a phone addiction and you refuse to consume and you only create, you'll start to attract attention sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And when you can do that, there's usually lots of different ways to monetize it. So if someone came to me and said, I have nothing, no skills, no money, nothing, and I had to get rich, I'd say that's what you should do. You should get a phone and develop a phone addiction and you should start to create. Look at you guys. Six months ago, you started to create something. Yeah. Now here we are. Bang. You have to create things in the world we live in. You have to it's create true. things. Yep, yep. You create things, you'll get attention, and you can always find a way to monetize attention. Jake Paul has monetized attention. Yes. Yep. That's all he's done. He hasn't, he hasn't, been a, he hasn't made his money being the best boxer. He's monetized attention. You have yep. to find a way for people to pay attention to you. From Vine to Instagram to YouTube. Yep. You know? Yep. And uh, no, that, that's, that's fantastic. It, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I never money. thought about that. Yeah. And networking is very powerful because, once again, you might know one thing, but your buddy over here, he's smart at investing. He's smart at, you know. Yep. Like for example, I feel like most guys are very ego driven yep. and they think they know everything. Yep. No, you don't. Yeah. You get at one thing, let's say you get at marketing, your buddy's good at, you know, finance. You put that together, you got a team now, mm -hmm. and that makes you grow. Yeah, and let's talk about network quickly, because I run a network on CobraTiff.com. There's the war room, which is a network of mine. So right. networking is extremely important for, for a couple of reasons. If you were in a room with ice cream experts and all they talked about was ice cream, how to make it, how to store it, how to move it, the different flavors, the size of the cartons it's in, how much it costs to produce. If all they talked about was ice cream and you were in that room, sooner or later, when someone comes to you to ask you something about ice cream, you're gonna know the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna accidentally know some shit about ice cream. If you're in a room of people who only talk about money, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you need to be around people who are about it. And the problem is with the people out here, everyone has a dream, but not many people have a plan. A dream and a plan are different things. When you say to guys, do you want to be rich? Yeah, I want to be rich. How will you get rich? Uh, you know, one day when a ship comes in. <laughs> so you could have a dream with no plan. When's the last time something fantastic has ever happened on accident? When's the last time you've seen a big jacked dude and you say, hey man, how'd you get so jacked? And he goes, don't know, oops. Don't know, <laughs> don't know, it just, it just happened. No, he planned it. Mm -hmm. He went to the gym, he worked for it, he ate a certain way, he planned his meals, he had to make it happen. It's exactly the same with getting rich. You need a plan to get rich, right? Most people have, everyone out there has a dream, but very few people have a plan. Yep. If you're surrounded by people. Okay, let me add the adage. The worst plan executed is better than the best plan never executed. People who have a plan to get rich and you provide value to them in some way because they're not going to drag you up if you ain't doing nothing because yeah. that's what friendship is. Friendship is value exchange. Yeah. If you provide value to them, sooner or later you're going to begin to make money. Let me tell you something. When I was broke, and like I said, I have a bunch of money now. I was broke, broke. This is not like I was broke, but from like a middle class family. I was broke, broke, single mother, public government housing, mm -hmm. no car. I had to run to the gym, broke. When I was flat, flat, flat broke, the only one, only of my friends I'd sit around and talk to were my friends who would talk about money. 
Mm. The guys would sit and talk about video games or sit around and talk about football. Yeah, I wouldn't. I that. wouldn't hang around with them. I wouldn't hang around <laughs> with them. I only used to sit and talk to my friends talk about money. None of us had any money, right? But if we walked into a coffee shop and we bought coffee, we would then sit there over our coffee and analyze how did this coffee shop make us give them our money? Because that's what's happened. We've oh. given our money to this coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Why? Did we really want coffee? Where is it located? Is it a convenient location? Is it because of the brand of the coffee? Is it because the waitress is cute? Why are we in this particular coffee shop? Why didn't we go to that one? Why are we in this one? If we were to open up a coffee shop next door, how could we outcompete this one? What's the rent for this place? What's the margin on a cup of coffee? Everyone in here is a man. If you notice, everyone in here is a man in a business suit. Why is the person serving not a hot girl? Why is it a, why is it a guy? Do they sell sandwiches? Do they sell cake? Like, start to actually think. Yeah. Yeah. Think yeah. about the money. And then if you do that every single time you spend money on anything, you're going to end up realizing there's tons of gaps. There's gaps in the market everywhere. You'll start to sit there and go, you know what? I could open up a coffee shop right next door to this fucking coffee shop. Change this, this, and this, and murder this place. Mm. Because, but people don't think about it. People just give their money away all day, and it never even crosses their mind about how they were convinced to give their money away. Yeah. You know? Because if you want to get rich, you're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from the sky. You need to convince other people to give you their money. So every time you give your money away, work out why. Yep. You know? So you need to be surrounded by people who think this way. You need mm. to adopt this attitude. I've always had it even when I was poor. You need to start to realize that the traditional <laughs> methods of creating wealth, which are advertised to you, are a scam. The idea that you can just work really hard, save up, get a mortgage, and in 35 years, pay the house off, and then you'll be rich. So that's, that's not no. real. That's what your parents did, right? The average co cost of a house during your parents' era was like four times the wages or five times the yearly wage or something. Now it's completely out of control. Yeah. It's completely yeah. out of control. And patience is another thing I'll make a, a big point. Patience is a huge enemy to getting rich. I don't care what these Gary V and these <laughs> dorks, because Gary Vee's a nerd. Gary Vee's a nerd, right? He may have some money, right? But if I were to grab him by his neck. <laughs> hey, bro, you got to be really tough and you got to really work hard. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Pussy. He's a bitch, right? So I don't, when all these dorks are talking about patience, patience, patience is what they tell the slaves to convince the slaves to keep being slaves. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. If I was in charge of the world, right, and I had a, a, a working class of slaves, which is what the working class is. I don't use that word slaves unironically, right? You're slaves, and I'll tell you why. If I can create something from thin air, and I can create unlimited amounts of it, and I can make you give up your life for this thing, you're my slave. Mm. If I could create dollars from thin air, unlimited amounts, and I can make you sacrifice your life. Fiat currency. For, yeah, and make you sacrifice your life for a tiny percentage of what I can create from thin air, you are my slave. Because even if you say no, I'll say I'll give you some more. Oh, okay. Oh, here's some more of the free thing I make. Here, go go do it. Go, go, go clean the streets, idiot. <laughs> You're a slave, right? Mm. So the slaves, what they do to keep the slaves being slaves is they, they advertise patience. Don't worry. Here's what you do. You go to school. You go to college. Yep. You go to university. You get in debt. You get a mortgage. You get in more debt. You work really hard. Don't worry. Your life's shit now, but in the future it'll be good. Don't worry. A good day's coming. You might retire with a 401k. Keep working. Keep going, slave. You can do it. Patience is how they trick you into keep being a slave. Yep. I turned myself from no money to my first million in two years to 30 million three years later. That's how fast you can make money if you're about money. Mm. If you're about it, right? So I've never believed in patience. You gotta forget the patience. You gotta forget the people who money don't. Money loves speed, man. Money loves speed. Yeah. You gotta forget the people who aren't about money around you. It's gotta be all you think about, all you talk about. You gotta start producing. You gotta start attracting attention one way or another. And if you do all those things, you will start to make some money. But next time you're sitting with your friends, this is a challenge for every single person watching this. Next time you're sitting with your friends, unprompted, come in, sit down, and just join in the conversation. Just join in whatever they're talking about. And after about 20 seconds, sit and think, this is bullshit. This is not going to make any of us rich. Mm -hmm. They're talking about this, that, this bitch, fucking football game, this guy. That This is not going to make any of us rich. Yep. I, I, Nonsense. Eureka. Eureka. I am wasting my life. Right? And that's what the War Room Network's about. Every single person in the War Room's a killer. We, are all, we, talk about the, we talk about a few certain subjects, and one of them is absolutely cash. 
I'll tell you one more thing. With the modern world we live in and this virus, blah, 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 you the time to get rich is running out. Yep. Mm -hmm. The time to get rich is running out. Slavery is coming, and you're not going to be able to escape. I don't want to rant and rant and rant, but I don't think most people realize that when they're printing all this money. Tell them, Andrew. When, when Biden is printing all this money, saying, we're going to give you a, a relief check. What happens when they print money from the sky is that the currency inflates, yes. right? The currency is worth less, which means it's going to take more of said currency to purchase assets. This is what's going to happen. Yep. So the rich who own the assets, the value of their assets increase. And the poor with no assets, the ability to buy one becomes harder and harder as days go on. Yes. Because it's so much more expensive compared to their wages. The rich are literally getting richer and the poor are literally getting poorer in real time. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can see it happening. And it's about to be have nots and have yachts up in this motherfucker. <laughs> and if you're on the wrong team... He's actually right. What the fuck? If you're on the wrong team, you're never going to escape. Yeah. These are some of the last years where a broke person can genuinely escape the matrix. You are running out of time. Forget that patience crap. Right? You gotta get rich now. Yeah. You gotta get rich now. So I don't think a lot of people understand what's really happening. So if you don't get your act together, you're gonna have trouble. And that's what the war room's all about. And this virus has accelerated it, right? The richest people in the world have become so much richer yep. since the start of corona. The only thing I disagree with is now join my thing. So he's saying, I've created the problem. Now here's my solution. No thanks. Sorry, not corona. It, what's it called? It's called Bear Bug. Bear Bug. So it's the start of bear bug. And the poorest people have been, had their businesses shut down. The middle class has been decimated. The rich are completely fine. You know what? During bear bug, I traveled to 17 countries. And I traveled to 17 countries with two tricks. One, I have four passports. And this is something we teach inside the war room. We teach you how to make money. Then we teach you how to get multiple citizenships. Because you can no longer trust a single government with control over your life. If you do that, if you do that you're being an amateur. You're being an amateur if you say the American government decides where I can go. You could take my American passport right now. No problem. I've got four more. I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out. Right? Unless you're on Interpol top 10, the world's not as connected as you think. Right? They can ban a, they ban a particular passport number. You could have a different passport. Imagine this. Imagine if you were extremely sexy, kickboxing world champion, caramel, <laughs> gorgeous. Imagine you were to get a passport in a country, let's say, I don't know, Estonia. And then imagine you legally changed your name in said country. Uh, now you have a perfectly legal legal passport with a different name. Wouldn't that be interesting? Very interesting. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things you can do to per put yourself beyond control of a government. And I teach this. This is what we teach inside the war room. Because the idea of living off-grid isn't real anymore. You can no longer live yeah, off-grid. No. So the yeah. only thing you can do is live on so many grids that they can't contain you. So during this bear bug, when we weren't allowed to travel, I've been to 17 countries. And I did that because I had so many passports that one of them was always permitted. And secondly, private jets. Because <laughs> I'm rich. And, and this is the point I'm making. If you want freedom in the future, in the new world that's coming, if you want to be a free man, you need to have a bunch of passports and a bunch of money. Because it's about, like I said, have nots and have yachts. It's about to be people like me doing whatever we want, ignoring the rules, and the other people, oh, it's locked down again. I guess I better go home. Yeah, exactly. Do, do, right. do, 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 do. Which one do you want to be? Yeah. As a, just a serious question. Which one do you want to be? And this is what we teach in the war room. We're teaching all about residencies, national, multiple passports, and how to make money. So making money is a, is a key component to freedom. And this bear bug thing has shown you how quickly they will lock you in your house. Facts. They will lock you up in jail in your own house. Last and year around this time, 100% <sighs> lockdown. You couldn't do yeah, nothing, nothing, bro. And if that doesn't scare you, then there's something wrong with you. Because what's scary about it is everyone listened. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And Sucks. everyone listened because they've destroyed the masculine spirit. Yep. Because one man can't go riot by himself. I That's tried. Right. When when this bear bug thing kicked off, I put it all over Twitter, all over YouTube. I tried to inspire rebellion. I moved to Sweden. I lived in Sweden for three months. Oh, yeah, because, because Sweden was still open at Sweden the time, right? was wide open. No masks. No restrictions. Perfectly normal life with a lower death rate than America. Explain that. Are we can mm. explain it because the numbers are fake. But yep. I was in Sweden, running around nightclubs, sleeping with Swedish girls. Put it all over YouTube. <laughs> Say, look. But no one was like, oh, I can't afford to come to Sweden. I don't have the right passport to come to Sweden. Blah, blah. That's your fault. This crap is, is just beginning. It was the beginning of a new age. Yep. And as a man, you need to prepare yourself for that. And if you're sitting there and you understand what I'm saying to you, because some people are going to listen to this right now and go, some people are going to listen and go, whatever. 
Some people are going to listen and go, yeah, he's right. But then in 10 minutes after this podcast finishes, go back to jerking off the Pornhub. <laughs> and, and there's going to be a small percentage of people who go, you know what? This take guy knows exactly what he's talking about. I need to prepare for the new world. And if you do understand, that's why that's when you join the world because that's what we do. And, and that's at corporatetate.com. Like and also, um, yeah, just ignore the very last thing he said. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know what they say, right? Scientific method: take what works and then ignore the marketing delusion where you have to give your money away for free. Quick, guys, because we're going to continue talking about money. But I will read these super chats real quick because I got a question with uh, yeah. for Andrew on the money. Uh, okay, the renegade wingman. I got to meet Andrew and Tristan in LA a few years back. These guys are the real deal. Listen up to these knowledgeable bombs, uh, knowledge bombs. Question for Tate: How did you get the nickname Cobra? Be well, brother. Uh -huh. Yep, we got. It was given to me. Cobra was given to me because I fight with my hands down. I don't mm. fight. I fight like Adesanya. We fight the same. We fight with our hands. I was a karate fighter traditionally. I, I did Shotokan uh. karate. I did I have three black belts in karate, so I fought with my hands down. So they kind of called me Cobra because my hands were always down instead of protecting my face. Like, uh. I'm, I'm perspicacious. One of my favorite words. I believe in perception. I like to see things. I believe in seeing into the future. Everything I'm telling you now about Corona and multiple passports and needing money is because I'm a perspicacious individual. Well, he's tall, right? So he would uh, lean in and then lean back and then counter, right? As I said, you can... Be a good fighter if you do karate. Like, as I said, did, didn't I just say that, like, earlier in the video? Oh, perhaps it was... Yeah, yeah. So, as I said. Okay. Let's end the video there. Hit the like, hit the sub, hit all the notifications, drop me a donation. Like Hunter M, Adrian R, Tom and Bobby, Dylan Renaissance Press, Brian, Andrew, and Alan. Shoutouts to you. Most recent purchaser of Strategist Guide to Seduction. Thank you. Go buy my books at bit.ly slash heliosbooks. If you want to see more than one video a day, you want to see three or four, whatever, just join my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the blog. You can get early access to my videos. I also offer coaching services. You want me to help you out? Cool. Message me at the blog at gmail.com. That's my email. And I'll slot you right in. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Especially if you listen to the end. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.